This is the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. Good evening and welcome inside the Rev Zone. Kevin Bollier alongside Rudder Rebels head coach T.J. Otzelberger. We're inside the UNLV basketball offices after another sizzling week of running Rebel basketball. This is not only the best basketball we've seen this season from this team, but maybe in this program in the last few years, you guys are rocking it. Our guys are doing a great job. They're really putting in the extra time and in the, in the shooting the ball and extra work on the practice court. They're playing with a very competitive spirit. Uh, they're intentional defensively to get stops, and we're getting out and running in transition. So proud of the progress we've made, but we've got a long way to go. Well, let's look back at the week. We're going to begin with Saturday night's game against New Mexico. And once the foot got on the gas, it was full speed ahead. Saturday matinee at the Thomas & Mac as UNLV ran with New Mexico. Jonah Antonio delivers a catch and shoot three out of the gate to get UNLV going. But the Lobos follow that with a 12-0 run as Corey Manigo and Jaquan Lyle knock down triples. Meanwhile, UNLV went almost six minutes without a point, but they turned it on after that. Marvin Coleman hit a three, then drove the lane for a lay-in. Bryce Hamilton with the sweet move to the hole for two, and Antonio hit a triple at the midway point of the first half to give UNLV its first lead since 3-0. Here's a key sequence that got everyone fired up. The block by Hamilton on one end, and then on the other end, Antonio dropped it in from downtown. Donnie Tillman takes a wild shot with the left hand, and it goes. Hamilton drove for the lay-in. Then off the inbounds pass, Tillman gets the bucket and the bump and Hamilton knocks down a turnaround in the lane just before the buzzer. UNLV went into halftime with a 43-40 lead. The running Rebels dominated the second half in all phases of the game. Amari Hardy gets it to Hamilton for the basket. Tillman weaves his way through traffic for two, and Hamilton penetrates and dishes to Blair. He throws it down. Hardy with the sweet fake and assist to Mbake Jong for the bucket. Then the two connect on the alley-oop. That is when Showtime got going. Coleman, no look to Blair, he flies in for the dunk. New Mexico turns it over and Coleman goes coast to coast for the lay-in. Watch Hardy go baseline and he flies through the air. The highlight reel flush. That brought the crowd to its feet and they stayed that way. Hamilton gets the slam and the slap to get the Mac rocking more. And the exclamation point from Hardy down the lane, he throws it down and listen to these stat lines. UNLV outscores New Mexico 58-28 in the paint. The Rebel bench outscores the Lobos 42-3, mainly because Hamilton pours in 35 points off the bench. And Marvin Coleman with the first triple-double for UNLV since 1999 with 11 points, 12 rebounds, and 11 assists. It all adds up to another big conference win for UNLV, 99-78. to we just want to make a statement, you know, earlier in the <clears throat> preseason, we weren't picked too high. So, you know, we have nothing to lose and we just want to keep getting better every single day. Just always staying aggressive. You know, the coaches want me to stay aggressive and, you know, also for my teammates, you know, they look for me uh, in right positions and I just make the play. All right, before we start breaking down the, the team effort, let's talk about a couple of individuals. 35 for Bryce Hamilton and, and we've seen him kind of get the Jets going in the last couple of games, but once he got uh, going in the lane, there was no stopping him. Bryce is amazing in the open court. He's continued to mature. We've seen him grow up in front of our eyes. He's still just a 19-year-old sophomore trying to find his way. But over the last three weeks or so, he's really taken those strides forward. Uh, tremendous score in space. He is a tough cover and really proud of him how he continues to step up for our team. We've talked a lot about Marvin Coleman and the contribution he's made to this team since Eli went out. And a triple-double on Saturday night. Uh, he, he does everything well, and that's what you need out of your guard. He's not looking to just score. He's distributing. He's playing defense. Uh, the guy's amazing. Marvin really wants our team to win, and he works that way. He leads that way. He communicates that way each and every day. And so he's done an amazing job taking our team to that next level. He's never worried about his ego, his stats, or what comes. And amazing what happens to a guy who the last thing he's worried about his stats is to get a triple-double. And in terms of the team, uh, when you attack New Mexico, we talked about last week when we were previewing this game how they were going to change defenses up a lot, and they went 1-3-1 one, one zone 
most of the time and allowed you kind of to, to open up the flow of the game. How do you think your guys did in terms of adjusting to what New Mexico was throwing at them? I think as the game wore on, we did a great job. Early, we hadn't seen them play 1-3-1 all year, so had us on our heels a little bit to start. But we talked about getting out in transition. At times, we played four or even five guard lineups to really space it, advance the ball in transition, try to attack them before they got set. And our guys did a great job as the game settled in of doing that. Well, let's turn our attention to Wednesday night now where San Jose State came to town and the running Rebels gave the fans a reason to get on their feet. A late Wednesday night tip as San Jose State was in town. UNLV got out quick. Amari Hardy, the alley-oop to Mbake Jong. Then the two combined for another alley-oop to open up an early lead. Later in the half, Marvin Coleman goes coast to coast for the lay-in, and Donnie Tillman with the sweep feed to Bryce Hamilton. He throws a jam, and the Rebels led 38-32 at the break. In the second, off the hardy miss, Jong is there to get the offensive board and put back. Then off a Coleman miss three, he hustles to get his own rebound and finds an open Jonah Antonio, who buries a triple from the wing. Coleman keeps up the hustle, the steal, and he gets it ahead to Hardy for the lay-in. Hamilton running as well, stagging the rebound and going end to end for two. Then the Hamilton helper to Antonio. He is wide open for a three, and on UNLV's next trip down, Antonio all alone in the same spot and the same result as he buries the triple. Even Jong wanted to dial it up from long distance. This one, though, was only a two because his foot was on the line, but it was a rock and roll kind of night for the Rebels, who have six players in double figures led by Coleman 17. UNLV cruises 98 to 87. We don't want to overlook anyone. Um, most importantly, on our home court, you know, we got to take care of business there. So, you know, for us to, you know, win this game, I mean, we, we uh, let off the gas a little bit at the end. We need to close out games a little bit better. But, you know, the energy of the whole game was great for us. There's a lot of gaps in their zone, you know, especially in the corner. So, Coach was telling me at halftime, sprint to the corner and get some easy looks and, you know, just fortunate to knock him down. I've bugged you a lot this season about pace of play. Uh, it was very deliberate and slow, and, and a lot of fans even complained about that. What we saw this week, starting with the San Jose State game on Wednesday, is things pick up a lot more pace-wise. Did you anticipate kind of letting them off the leash as much as you have here in the conference season, or has that just been matchup situational? Game in and game out, we want to employ whatever strategy we think gives us the best chance to win. And with San Jose in their matchup zone, and uh, you know, and then even with New Mexico, I think we felt like we need to beat the defense down the court. And that'll be something we try to do and incorporate more and more. It's worked for us. At the same time, we've got to be a team that can execute in the half court. And I think game in and game out, whatever the job calls for, we need to step up and do it. But it's been fun to see our guys embrace getting out in transition. When you have as good of a start as this team has, 6-1 and one now in conference play, how do you make sure that the, the highs still stay high, but the carryover isn't going to cockiness, if you will, going into the next week? Because we all know how tough this conference is week in and week out. It's important for me to lead this program in such a way to know our team, to know where they're at mentally and what they need to be at their best. We talked in there, I want those guys to enjoy the game tonight. I want them to make smart choices, start preparing for the Reno game immediately because that game's gonna be upon us uh, before you know it. And I think overall we can continue to get better if we stay humble and we stay hungry. Uh, I think our best is still yet to come. Perfect transition because speaking of Reno, they are on the docket next week as well as San Diego State. We're going to preview those games when we come back in the red zone right after this. You're watching the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, sponsored by RC Willie and Levitt Law Firm. A big week coming up for the Running Rebels as they have two tough ones. First traveling up north to take on Reno and then a huge home game on a Sunday against San Diego State. The week starts on the road in Reno as the rivalry is renewed with the Wolfpack for in-state bragging rights. On the basketball side of the rivalry, UNR has had the upper hand for the last few years 
and the Wolfpack players say they have no choice but to be invested in North versus South because their fan base demands it. If you go to Reno, you know, you know, you're wearing red, you know, it's still, you know, it's still, it's still don't, don't welcome that too kindly. So yeah, it's still a rivalry no matter what, no matter what the record is. You know, we're still looking at a 0-0. Of course, Eric Musselman fueled the passions of the rivalry, but he has left for Arkansas. Enter Steve Alford, someone who is comfortable being a UNLV rival. He is six years removed from his time at New Mexico and realizes running Rebel fans don't really care for him. A dislike that goes back to 1987 when he was the guard on the Indiana team that knocked UNLV out of the Final Four. I think it's just because I was a player at Indiana and that's if you're a Rebel fan, you're not going to like anybody that, that played on that Indiana team. And then obviously we're a rival at New Mexico and we had success. We, we did have success at New Mexico and we had to go against some good running Rebel teams. Success in Reno will not come overnight. A lot of last year's talented team is gone and he has a group that does not have a lot of experience. They're also doing things a little differently than under Musselman, says returning guard Jazz Johnson. There's a lot more off-ball stuff going on. Um, we run a lot of sets, so let's you know, run a lot of screens, uh, off-ball screens, stuff like that. So I, th I say the biggest difference is just like the body movement of all five players rather than, you know, focusing on the talent of, you know, just the team in general. One sidebar that we'll keep an eye on is the crowd. This will be the first major meeting between the two schools since the brawl at the end of the Cannon game that saw the fans involved. It's going to be an amped up atmosphere. The Rebels need to make sure that they can handle the moment. On Sunday at 1 o'clock, the running Rebels welcome in old rival San Diego State. And the Aztecs come in as one of the best teams in the country with a top 10 ranking and a massive matchup headache for UNLV. SDSU is a veteran team with athleticism and length that creates havoc on both ends of the floor. Malachi Flynn leads the way, averaging 16 points and five assists a game. But Matt Mitchell is also one to keep an eye on with his ability to score in bunches. Head coach Brian Dutcher says the thing that he likes most about this group is they aren't letting the early season success impact what they do in practices and games. I got a veteran team that's not too caught up in the rankings. It makes for uh, great, great folly for the media. And uh, it, it puts us on a national map, which I love. But uh, we're not caught up in it where it's going to affect our performance. Teams struggle to score against the Aztecs. In the Mountain West, they are number one in scoring defense, giving up around 56 points a game. And they lead the conference in almost every defensive statistical category. They also have a top five ranking overall in the NCAA's net metric. A tall task, but to get back to the top of the mountain, you have to topple off the people in front of you. This is the first opportunity. This is going to be your first taste of the rivalry between UNLV and UNR uh, on Wednesday night. We've often talked about getting the players to buy into it because some see it as just football rivalry, but there is a basketball rivalry there. How do you make sure as a first year head coach and with a lot of new faces that they buy in that this is important to the state of Nevada? Well, we talked about it in our locker room after the New Mexico game is we've got to uh, flip our focus. And I think in a rivalry game, things are going to be that much more intense and, and the battle is going to be that much more heated for our fans and the passion everybody has to, to go to Reno and, and get a victory. We know how hard that's going to be and we know how hard we have to work the next few days. So as much as you want to bring your best effort and energy on game night, that preparation is so important. That's where we intend to start tomorrow. Well, I know we don't want to put the cart before the horse, but on Sunday, a huge showdown against the top team in the conference. San Diego State have not lost a game yet. Uh, this is a team uh, that they are now talking about potential number one seeds and everything else. But from a basketball standpoint, it starts with defense for San Diego State and, and kind of cracking that puzzle for them is going to be the key to being in this one and getting a win. Very complete ball club. They are a tremendous defensive team. That's kind of been the identity of that program for a number of years. Now they have guys that can knock down shots and they have scoring options all over the floor. Seeing Malachi Flynn has uh, taken their program. He's 
uh, maybe the best or one of the best guards in this conference playing at a high level. Uh, Mitchell's shooting the ball with tremendous confidence this year. Wetzel gives them a grad transfer who's come in and given them a low block scoring threat and some extra rim protection. So really complete basketball team. You don't go this far in the season without a loss unless you're really complete and really together and they've done a great job. The San Diego State UNLV back in, in the days, this was 18,500 Thomas and Mack and Rockin'. How important is it to have on a Sunday afternoon with no football going on, this place packed and create a, an atmosphere that is going to be deserved of a one versus two in the conference showdown? It's an unbelievable opportunity for our players, for our program and our fans. And we need everybody to come out. We need to pack the Thomas and Mack. We need to have a great crowd in there. There has to be tremendous energy. Players and fans need to feed off each other in a big time game like that. And I know that our, our fans will answer the bell and it's my job to make sure our players do the same. That's a one o'clock tip on Sunday out at the Thomas and Mack. Up next in the red zone, Vince Sapienza goes one on one with new UNLV head football coach Marcus Arroyo. Let's on the back side of the break as the red zone rolls on. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. Welcome back to the Rev Zone. Vince Sapienza sitting alongside UNLV football head coach Marcus Arroyo. Coach, it's been a whirlwind two months for you. How are you holding up? How's the transition to Las Vegas? It's been good. It's been, uh, uh, you know, I've been here in Vegas the last 13 days and got here the third after the Rose Bowl. And, uh, but the last month has been, uh, has been awesome. It's been a great experience uh, putting together staff and, and putting together all the pieces that, that we feel in, these, in this short amount of time we've had a chance to do will keep us at an optimal point of, of moving forward. And let's talk about the st staff. Obviously, you kicked off 2020 with a big Rose Bowl win, and now you get your feet planted firmly, all eyes on Las Vegas. Where are we at on the staff? What can fans expect from your staff, and why should they be so excited? Yeah, so obviously, uh, when you're going through this process, I think that the, the main component for me was to make sure that I had uh, the right pieces character-wise in the building, guys that were able to, uh, number one, felt comfortable with, guys who could teach, guys who were uh, competent and, and had high integrity. Um, the guys in the building uh, that are currently here at this point um, are great teachers, but they're also great men and great fathers, and then they're great ball coaches. And uh, that was really important for me um, in, in the search for finding the guys that, that align best to create uh, chemistry in our group. And so those components have really been the biggest things now moving forward that, that I'm most excited about because as we've gone through staff meetings now and, and, and see kind of the alignment that the group has, there's a great great chemistry that you hope you see when everybody gets in the same room. So it's been awesome. Staff complete, more, more to come. And more to come. Uh, how, how soon do you hope to, I get, guess, get that complete? Well, I think ideally you want it done as fast as you can, but I don't know if that's the most, uh, I think timing is critical in that. I don't think that's, you don't, you don't rush things like that. You don't rush things that are that vital. Let's talk a little bit about recruiting. Obviously the early signing period came and gone with the timing of when you got this job. Where are we at with recruiting? How, again, I don't know if difficult is the right word, challenging maybe in terms of the timing and just where we're at. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the one thing that was uh, that, that's most challenging was the early signing period and making sure we, we, we were responsible in that regard. And uh, and I think that, that I'm happy the way we did that in, in regards to making sure that um, I had guys getting in here and getting as much information as I could on the guys that were currently in that early stages. And now that we've got a coaching staff together and we've had a chance to really dig down and be real thorough um, with all these young men and develop a board uh, to hit the road uh, and when this contact period starts tomorrow, is something that's really exciting. You talk about the recruiting process started with the guys that were already in-house. When you look forward, what are the pieces that are missing or, or what are you really looking for as we move forward now in your first recruiting process? Well, I mean, the guys in-house and what I mean by that is our players I currently have, the roster I currently have, and, and, and I think my background and, and, and the, uh, the past experiences I've had, um, I've understood that the most important thing I have right now is the guys I have on the roster and re-recruit them and evaluate them. And so um, the, the overarching theme after visiting with those guys, the first day I got here, I visited with a handful of those guys, I had a first team meeting, which was great, was that they're hungry. Um, these guys are ready to win, they wanna work. Um, obviously right now we're in a dis what they call discretionary time and seeing how often guys come around during discretionary times, meeting on their own, is, uh, is really exciting to see them in the building when they really don't have to be. And uh, so that's exciting. I think um, bolstering the roster is, is, ev is everywhere um, at, all, at all phases. We've got an opportunity to take guys at every position. 
and making sure that we can, uh, you know, elevate the culture and, and on and off the field um, is really something that we're excited about. I know you've done plenty of work. I know you have plenty of work to do, but have you had the moment yet where Look, look where you are, look what you've been able to accomplish to this point. Again, I know there's plenty of work to do, but have you had that moment yet? This opportunity, I wake up every morning thankful for. So this is, this is a really uh, humbling experience that I'm, I'm really fired up for. Coach, you're a busy man, appreciate the time. We'll chat down the line. Thank you so much. The Reb Zone rolls on with the best plays of the week. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, sponsored by RC Willie and Levitt Law Firm. All right, Coach, good luck this week. Uh, we're going to be with the team up in Reno, have coverage for you all week long on the news side. Thanks for joining us for the Rev Zone for this one. We leave you tonight with the Running Rebel Plays of the Week. Good night. The Rib Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm.